morning, Laura. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Can you. I'm just happy to have you here, actually. So can you just tell me briefly who you are and what are you doing? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, well, I am, firstly, I think, I'm a YouTube creator now. Um, I have a YouTube channel where I share um, my tips and my expertise on language learning, but also on the topics of minimalism, veganism, traveling, and lifestyle design. Um, I also have an online business. I'm a language mentor and I create online digital courses and I am a linguist. And I think that's the majority of my job descriptions. And how old are you again? <laughs> um, I'm 25 and a half. Wow, that's impressive. So well done here for doing all Thank of you. it. <laughs> and um, I've seen your YouTube videos, which are incredible, by the way. So um, for anyone who's watching it, go and take a look at her um, YouTube channel. It's amazing. Oh, um, you. Can you just tell me briefly? So I've seen this video about how I've learned eight languages. Um, how did it start? Like, what are you? Are you <laughs> about languages that you decided to oh you know what I'm gonna learn seven languages like how how you done that um okay um well I have to start from the from the beginning um this video is the first video that popped off on my channel and so many people discovered me through this video and I know that many people think that I actually learned and I speak and I use eight languages, but the actual title is why I speak and understand eight languages. So I want to make it very, very clear because I'm not a superhuman. <laughs> I don't know eight languages on an advanced level, but it's true. Um, I can understand some bits of four languages and I can actually speak and understand four more. Um, and it all started when I was three years old and my parents signed me up for an English course at my kindergarten. And that was my first second language. <laughs> so that was um, a very early start and I basically never stopped learning English. Um, then at around the age of maybe nine or even earlier, I was traveling to the Czech Republic with my parents very, very often. We would ski there and many instructors were Czech and they were talking to all the children that were learning there in Czech. And I picked up a lot of Czech. <laughs> this way mostly like the skiing vocabulary but still <laughs> so that was um the language that was very very easy for me to understand for obvious reasons if you if you didn't know i'm polish and czech is also a slavic language so it's very um easy to mutually understand each other um, then at around the age of 13 so in my first year of middle school i had russian classes Unfortunately, I wasn't really um, super deliberate and super conscientious about it. And since it was an extra class in my middle school, after six months of noun declensions, I decided to quit <laughs> because it was just too hard for me back then. But still, as, as with Czech, um, Russian is very easy. Not very easy, but still quite easy to understand when you're a Slavic um, language user. So that was number three. And Polish is my native language, so that's four. <laughs> so moving on to French. Um, I was 15 when I started learning French on my own. So I don't know if you, um, Dominika, if you remember the service called ESKK. I know, I don't. Okay, so if you don't know what it is, it's basically like a company that sends dis distance learning courses and they are on everything yeah so you can you can even sign up for a course on gardening <laughs> they can send you materials and you can learn gardening gardening so i asked my mom to buy me the french course the a1 french course and i was doing the lessons by myself oh wow but yeah but it required a lot of um you know motivation and i was super motivated because <laughs> i i just wanted to learn but i think yeah again with as with russian i was just not super super um, motivated to do everything by myself and still I was learning English all the time so I just um, didn't really push through I think then um, when I was in high school we had German classes that were obligatory so for three years I was learning um, German it was good I enjoyed it <laughs> it was something that not many people enjoy um, while at school but I actually liked it and it was quite good but since um, I graduated, I haven't really used German, so it's non-existent for me at the moment. Um, and around the same time, so in high school, I started listening to a lot of 
Enrique Iglesias' music. <laughs> so that meant <laughs> listening to Spanish, yeah. So I started picking up on Spanish, on Spanish words and structures and um, everything related to love in Spanish because that's Enrique. Um, and then I started um, doing some like learning on my own. But I think I, again, like I didn't have enough time be because when I started university, that's like the end of my um, formal education here, I had a I had a French course, so I was, I was focusing on my studies and my French course, and then I was doing some Spanish learning, but it was on the side. And one last language <laughs> that I think I mentioned in the video um, was Italian. So again, with my parents, we used, we used to travel a lot. And Italian is very easy for me to understand for two reasons. Um, the first one being that it's very similar to French in many respects. It's obviously not the same, but it's quite similar. But then when I was studying um, linguistics, people who study syntax especially, there are a lot of examples and a lot of things that are based on Italian because Italian is very interesting um, linguistically speaking. So I was listening and reading a lot of Italian so that it made, that made it very, very easy for me to understand this language. So I think that's it and I talked a lot. <laughs> Um, do you have any advice? Obviously, you've got probably many, many tips of how to learn languages, but do you have any advice, like maybe five, the most important ones? Oh, yeah, of course. Like, I, I work as a language mentor and I taught um, English and Polish for, for many, many years, and obviously I learned a lot. And I think the most important tip is to... I, th I think I have two. So number one is not make it a part of your life but find it find a way to make it your passion so the way i learned english um because i didn't actually like mention how and how long and what i was doing when i was learning english the reason why i learned english and i i speak english the way i do and i use it on a daily basis is i i just loved it too much <laughs> it was basically the love of my life and my my absolute passion and obsession even and this is something that i can recommend finding something that makes it easy for you to learn this language because you cannot live without it, if that makes sense. So for instance, for me, music and and films were a huge part of my language learning process and the majority of them were in English. But that's something that is universal. I think everyone watches films and listens to music in um, different languages. But maybe if you have a very specific hobby, maybe there's a way of using your interests in combining them with language learning. So for instance, gardening. <laughs> I don't know why gardening is so important to me today, but maybe trying to learn um, gardening in another language, I think that is something that can work. Um, but the second tip I think is um, mindset related. And that is um, something that I discovered in many of my students is that they think that learning is this like monster <laughs> word. It's like this huge word that we associate with school, with grades, with teachers, with classrooms. And just thinking about languages um, as, as learning something like in a school environment is something that makes it, we, we, we resent it a bit more. We think that it's something that we have to do like our homework. <laughs> and this is not integrally, um, inherently fun for us. So I think that the, the most important thing is to kind of trick yourself into thinking that, oh, it's easy, oh, it's fun. <laughs> of course, it's not easy to learn an entire language. As I said, with, with Russian for me, like learning noun declensions was just too much for me when I was 13, yeah. but it was because everyone was talking about it. Oh my God, it's so similar to Polish. We have to learn it as we did with Polish, oh, so many rules. And back then it was just too hard for me. But now, if I were to start any uh, learning any language from scratch, I would be like, oh my god, it's so much fun. <laughs> of course, there is an exception here. Oh, I'm so curious about this and that. So just thinking about it in a way that is more fun and not so daunting. I think these are my two. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is impressive. So, how, yeah, so, so you've been... Many, many people think that to learn language, you have to go to a different country and learn yeah. it there. Is that a misconception? Um, well, I can tell you from um, my own experience, I never lived or nor I studied in a different country, like in an English speaking country. And I learned English in this way, on this level, living in Poland my whole life. 
So So I think it's pretty clear that you can can achieve it. Yeah. Yeah. So persistence, change your mindset and making your life. That's the most crucial things you've talked about. Yes, I just have to say one more thing. Um, with English, I, I said that English was my obsession. I, I don't recommend <laughs> obsessing over languages in general. And I, I don't want to make anyone think that um, in order to learn languages and be advanced, you can't do anything else in your life because obviously you can. It's just again about um, the way you think about it and what you do in these other languages that is a part of your life. So yeah, definitely mindset plays a huge part in it. That's incredible. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate that you, you you shared this with us. And yeah, I hope you you'll find um sorry, I cannot talk right now. I'm just, I'm just thinking about that. Um yeah, <laughs> I hope you're gonna do great in, in your teaching and get, yeah, I, I've heard that you've got this program that you're doing. Um and you're you're giving lessons, right? Yeah, so you're yeah. Not, you're teaching American English because you your your English is so different because I'm I'm around British, so so British English and so polite and your language is so soft, so smooth. It's so much different. Yeah, when I listened to um, one of your videos, I was like, oh wow, her British English is so incredible and it's so I'm not so I'm not used to it, as you said, like to to the American English. Yeah, I, I can't wait actually to move to London and to listen to all the all the Englishes of the world because it's like a huge exactly. cultural hub. Um, yeah, but when it comes to my courses, um, so I, I've been teaching English and Polish also for 10 years and I actually have three courses. My most recent one is the American Accent Academy because as a linguist, I specialized in phonetics phonology um, and syntax, but mostly these two areas. So I just wanted to help everyone who wanted to first improve their pronunciation in English and then develop an American accent and just in general work on their speaking skills and I'm super proud of it. It's my baby and I have two more courses on advanced English grammar and on learning languages. So yeah, I just wanted to share everything that I learned in my entire life with everyone. (laughs) Well done. So for everyone, anyone who is watching it, you can always take a look at her courses. I'm going to link them down below so you can click and sign up for it if you want. Um, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. I'm not going to oh, take more than I really appreciate the time. And yeah, I um, yeah, hope everything is going to work well for you and you're moving to London. Yeah, and... I, I can't wait. I'm too excited. Um, thank you so much. It's going to be a journey. <laughs> thank you. Take care then and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.